I'm really sorry to tell you that the biopsy results have come, and unfortunately, the pathology is consistent with esophageal cancer. I have cancer? You have esophageal cancer, and I'm really sorry to tell you that. But there is plenty of hope, and we can talk about it. How did I get cancer? Well, there are many, many reasons why you developed cancer. But first, tell me, what do you understand of cancer? Oh, well, it's, it's a cell that's fighting against my white blood cells. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a few minutes and just give you the basics of cancer. What my understanding is, and that will help you understand what's going on with you. Please. OK. So uh, you remember the basic biology? A sperm and an egg together make one cell. This cell, this is how we all began. It has two strands of DNA. What we call our genes are in there. This cell has the potential to become any kind of cell. It can become brain cell. It can become cardiac cell. It can become esophageal cell, right? This cell, as it grows and multiplies, goes to 2, 4, to 6, to 8, to 16, and continues to grow, becomes anything it wants to be. So when we look at the esophagus, This is the esophagus, and this is the stomach. This is the cell that lines the esophagus, the inside. All of these cells are the same, and they have a certain amount of light, life, and they have a certain amount of potential to do things. They produce certain things, they grow, divide, and then one of the cells dies, and they remain in that position. In you, one of these cells has changed its behavior. And that change in behavior has to do with the effect of the genes that are in there. And this cell now continues to do things differently. Basically, this cell continues to replicate himself and does not follow the normal rules that it's always had, which is grow, divide, one cell, the mother cell dies, and the daughter cell remains. Now, this cell has the potential to grow continuously and never die. So it's not a new cell. It's a cell that changes behavior and then replicates. Exactly. It is one of these cells. It's changed its behavior. An analogy is if you had 100 children, and all of them are law-abiding citizen, and one of them changed his or her behavior and went to the basement and started producing drugs. That is your cell. That is your child. Just like this cell is essentially like all other cells, but it's now changed its behavior due to either an environmental stimuli or due to some other chemical stimuli where the genes are now producing different factors and the cell's changing its behavior. The changes are as follows. What makes a cell a tumor, it's the continuous replication without stopping. But more importantly, what is a benign tumor versus a malignant tumor or a cancerous tumor is that this cell now has ability to do things that it has not had before. For instance, there are lymphatic channels that live and help us with our immune system. There are blood vessels that bring blood supply to these areas of the body. This cell now can dislodge itself and penetrate and move to this lymph node. And that's the term metastasis to a lymph node comes from. Unfortunately, when one of these cells grows into the bloodstream and goes to a different organ, such as the liver, bone, brain, and other organs, that's what we call metastasis to another organ. So to help take care of you, we have to do a couple of tests. In case of this esophageal cancer, the first thing we need to do is do an endoscopic ultrasound. What the ultrasound tells us is how deep this tumor has penetrated. You could have a very large tumor on the surface without very deep penetration, and that's an earlier cancer than a cell, th than a smaller tumor that is deeply penetrating. Also, the fact that if it's gone to lymph nodes and other organs. We have a system called the TNM system. T 
T for tumor, N for nodes, and M for metastasis. Depending on, on what level these are and the presence of tumor, that's how we classify and stage the cancer. So we will do the following test for you. We'll do an endoscopic ultrasound, which will be done by the gastroenterologist who did the original EGD, followed by a PET scan, which will we give you a special sugar and we get a CAT scan of your body, and that allows us to evaluate to see if this has gone anywhere else. And the CT scan that goes as part of that CAT scan will tell us if there is any evidence of tumor in other organs. So I hear people talk about, we got all, we got all of the cancer out of my esophagus, but it came back in a liver or a kidney. But what I'm hearing you say is that it's not, I got cancer someplace else, it's that one of those cells traveled through the bloodstream to another organ, is that right? That is absolutely correct. When we tell a patient that unfortunately in a different area of their body, for instance, if their liver, there is a cancer now in that patient, more than likely we are talking about one of these cancer cells that has penetrated their bloodstream and has now settled in the liver and it's now multiplying and replicating itself. Therefore, that is a metastasis. That does not mean there is liver cancer. What we're talking about is the tumor from the esophagus has mobilized and is now living there. Therefore, those are the patients who require chemotherapy. So that's the purpose of if we have to do chemotherapy either before or after my surgery, it's to make sure that it hasn't spread or that it stops the spread of going to another organ? Actually, it is not to prevent the spread or stop the spread. It is to kill the cells that we cannot identify that may be present in that area because the best treatment options that we have and the best diagnostic test that we have usually gives us tumors that are centimeter or larger, which means over one million cells. So if there is one or two or even a hundred cell, we don't have a way of detecting it. That's why we offer people chemotherapy to eradicate those cancer cells that are hiding, that are not identifiable by what we're doing. Doctor, this is helpful, but I, I need time to process this and I'd really like to come back and ask you, along with my caregiver, I've got a lot of questions and I'm sure she is too. Would you be available to do that? It'll be my pleasure to talk to you. We do understand that most patients, like now that when they hear that they have esophageal cancer or any cancer, the rest of the information that we've given them this definitely does not persist in their memory because it's a shock. Therefore, I think it's absolutely essential that you come back with your family members and your loved ones so we can sit down and have this conversation again so I can have answer your questions. You may have many, many more questions. It is my suggestion that you write all of those questions down so that we can answer them because all your questions are important and all your questions are important because they're your questions.